I am Alana from Chicken House Press, and this is Writer's Chat. I got to sit down with Dr. Wendy Down. She is a doctor of integrative medicine and a life coach and the author of I Feel Better Now, How to Feel Okay on a Difficult Day. The book came out in February of 2023 and has had some great response from children who have worked through the program and seen results. So we are diving into a conversation about the process of producing a book, a little bit about what it's like to publish with me. Um, we talk about some of the content of the book, big feelings, um, how the system that she has developed through 25 years of her practice is really proving to work, to make change. So it's a great conversation. I hope that you'll stick with it. Come along for the whole talk. I don't even remember when you first reached out to me about your book. I feel like the process of your book was, it, it was quite long from like initial connection and making a plan and then things changed and changed and changed along the way, which is fine because the journey from idea to published book varies every single time. Do you want to talk a little bit about, about that? Like what were the reasons things were pushed, pushed off or, cause I, I feel like it might've been a year longer than we expected. Easily. <laughs> I'd love to talk about that. Because I remember when the idea for the book wrote, uh, appeared to me, right? It's a children's book. I sat down in an hour and a half and just wrote the whole thing because I just wanted to get into print a process that I use all the time in my practice. That's so simple a child could understand it. So I just wanted to write it that way. So I was like, wow, this is a book right here. And that was like, oh, the 90 minute book, fantastic. And then I found you and knew that I wanted to work with you. But then I guess I started getting maybe some feedback or I wanted to get more feedback. So I shared, you know, the manuscript with a few people. And so there was a lot of tweaking, which is probably more my personality you know, just a desire to get it as right as I could before it was put into print. And part of that came because I had written a book before, kind of on the same subject, and I didn't get feedback on it. And then the first time I saw it, it was in print and I wasn't happy with it. So maybe this time I just wanted to get it right. And plus I was really enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. So I figured as long as I was enjoying it, you were okay that it was taking longer. I just wanted to be in it. And then again, because it was a children's book and I've never written for children before and it had illustrations. There was all this stuff about, you know, how do you use illustrations? And there was some tweaking with all of that. And then once we finally had all the content and the illustrations, somebody that was reviewing it for me um, suggested that we actually try it out in a class classroom because that's where I wanted it to go and I had never done that so that was a whole nother I don't know six months yeah. of kind of waiting for that to happen and then getting feedback so ultimately I guess by the time it was finally done and tested and then we got great quotes from those kids right to be able to put on the book yeah. it was really so good able to take it into the classroom that was that was a brilliant move thank you um, yeah, it just seemed so I just, I guess that's why it took so long was just wanting to get it right. And now like when I look through it, I am so happy with like, Aww. every word and every image and there's not a place where I go through and go, Oh, I wish you know, that was different. So that just feels good. It just feels really good. Yeah. And that's, that's a refreshing attitude because so often, authors are really anxious and there's an urgency. I, I need to get this out. Like I've, it's written, like what, what are we waiting for? And so to have, have someone for you to actually be the one who's like, wait a second, let's just push pause because usually a project is based on a timeline that I propose. So I've, I've worked the project into my own 
workload and I, this is when, this is when this can happen and this is how it's going to roll out. And so usually it's the author's like, oh, couldn't we be a little faster? So, <laughs> so it was actually, it was, it was nice to be on the other end of that where I'm like, oh yeah, we can breathe. That's okay. That that's fine. Oh, that's good to hear because yeah. I felt bad. Like the part I felt badly about with that was that it was kind of like putting you off how you had things organized, but you right. seem okay with it. So oh, yeah, yeah. Well, because you can just, you just roll things, right? Like if, if one project is moved, another one takes its place. It's like, it's not, it's not like it threw me off or anything. I think, and ultimately it was, it was the right choice. So, so that's great. Did you work with children in your practice before you started this book? A few, but this practice, like I've been a life coach for more than 20 years. And this practice is one I've developed with adults and kids over those 25 years um, to really help them deal with difficult feelings and feel them change in a very, very direct way that they can feel immediately. So I just had honed the process over years and learn different language, like exactly what language to use and where people got stuck. And it worked even more easily with kids because kids are have way less barriers to actually just kind of being in their bodies and feeling things. So I don't work mostly with kids, but I knew the reason I wanted to write the book for kids was partly because I figured if I put it into language, kids would understand parents as they're reading the book would be like, oh, I didn't know this. If, I, if my child can understand this, maybe I'll be doing it alongside. So it was also kind of a backdoor into adults learning this thing that I wanted, that I want to teach. Yeah, of course. And have you, have you received any feedback from adults? So much. Oh my gosh, the things that come back, like, I'll get on it because mostly my practice is like one-to-one -one working with people and people come on like for the first time that I haven't met and they'll go and they'll hold up my book and I'll be like oh wow <laughs> it's like the introduction to them to my to my work and in fact just this week I met with somebody for the first time and she it, for her, it just, she said, I get it. Like, I never understood it before, but now that I have the book, I get it. Wow. So, what a gentle introduction into the work you do, right? If like, if they picked up the book and because it is so accessible and it's simple language, but you're right. It's very, like, why it's not just for kids. It's, it's for all of us. It is. Yeah. 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 And um, I get little notes from kids sometimes too. Or recently I got one from a teacher that had used it in the classroom. And so it's just really satisfying, yeah, to see it being used and to see the effect that it has. I mean, my focus is a little bit different maybe than a lot of authors because it's not a novel. It's like, it's, it's something I want to teach. And, and so this book is an avenue for doing that. And maybe that's part of my urgency, like lack of urgency too, is because I have expressed this in love lots of different ways through writing and blogging and teaching and that sort of thing so the book wasn't like my one book it was like let's try and put it in this form and let's get it right yeah yeah that makes sense you collaborated with someone on illustrations so can you talk a little bit about what that process was like like how did you meet Sharon how did you get connected? How like, how did that whole thing come about? And what is it like working with someone who's not even in the same country as you? Yeah. So her name's Sharon. 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 It's okay. I have trouble saying it too. <laughs> and she and I actually met because we did our, we did, went to school together, distant school. So we knew each other really, really well. And she actually does similar work to what I taught in the book so that was our connection but on the side she's just a part-time doodler that's what she does is doodles that's and they're beautiful. yeah they're beautiful and expressive and also her aim is to use doodles to help people learn about their bodies and that sort of thing too so it was a collaboration between two 
friends. That's how we got together. And so we already had a great deal of like our relationship established. Um, so it was easy to go back and forth with corrections or or that type of thing. I, I don't know what it would be like to work with somebody that I that I didn't have that with, but it was just such a great pleasure to to do it with a friend. Mm. Um, because we share that now, right? That a little note will come in and I'll message her and yeah. And she's she's in the UK? She's in the UK, yeah. So the process of that was I guess she saw the manuscript mm -hmm. and then I had already seen what her doodles looked like. So I gave her some ideas of where they could go in the manuscript and then she drew them. I think she just we just worked on them back and forth by Google Docs, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then you help place where they should go and modified them in the document. I don't know if I'm giving information that's helpful or not, but we just went, the, the distance wasn't a problem because we would just get on Zoom. Right. And look at, you know, look at them together. And I would say, you know, can this be red rather than green or whatever it was? And then she would work on it. And the internet makes us all neighbors. Yeah, that's a great way of saying that. That's true. Yeah. 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 And has she had any success sharing the book where she's at or has most of that burden fa fallen on you? Maybe burden is the wrong word, but. Um, um, yeah, our responsibility, it feels that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has. She's done it a little bit where she is, but most of it um, feels like it's with me. Yeah. And that's partly because what we sort of negotiate at the beginning is like, is this our book? Is this my book? you know, how much of this do we share? And because the content was really my content, my life's work, if you want to say, I really wanted it to be mine with her. I like doing the illustration part. So that feels appropriate that that's the way that it is. Yeah. So getting the word out there, you have, you have your own platform with your business, with your, um, your coaching, your practice, how has it been expanding beyond that? Have you expanded beyond that? What what have you done to promote your book and to get it into people's hands? Well, this is kind of where I'm at right now. I have a, a mailing list of people that are interested in my work that is always there and responsive when I send things out. I haven't been as active with that as I normally am. And so I would like to get back into the regularity of that because I know it's just there are people that are eager for what I have to say and would like, if I send something out, I guess send little things out. Like I just got this note notice from a child or like there's it, it, the engagement would be there if I, once I get more active in it, but also, you know, I share that stuff on Facebook I guess I got it into what what's the library, the Canadian library system? Uh online library system that I applied to have it show up there for indie writers. I yeah, don't know. That, there's a name for it. Oh my there's goodness. A name for it. The other thing I've done um that's been really, really fun is I bought myself, um, I'll tell you this, even though you already know, a hundred copies of my own book. I bought them. So they're sitting in hard copy. And I just decided that my unconventional marketing of it would be just um, regularly to, to look for somebody that might be interested. Like I just sent it to a big podcast um, that I follow because they had a guest on that, you know, they were both really interested in. So I sent it to them with a note. I've sent it to like a hospice. I've sent it like just whatever occurs to me that might be somebody that would be interested in it I that's um that's been fun just to mail those out I think that's a brilliant way to market that isn't conventional right like there's there's all these how-to lists of how are you going to market your book and how do you get people's attention but people forget what a personal touch does so if you're sending a note if if I'm getting a book and a note in the mail that tells me why this is valuable from the author. I think that that's really, really powerful. And so keep doing that. I think that that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it feels good. And I also say like why, why I'm sending it to them. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Like I why you, this is like, I'm trying to do this regularly and here's why you're my person today. Yeah. It's speaking directly to that ideal reader, right? Which is something that we hear over and over in book marketing is speak to your ideal reader. So when you make a Facebook post, you're supposed to speak to the one. Who is this one that you've written to? Because if you speak to everyone, you're speaking to no one. So this is a perfect practice of that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I mean, it's not, I would have thought I would hear from everybody, right? Yeah. Like, get a book in the mail you're going to hear back but I don't and that's okay because I know my agenda is that I'm doing it because it feels right the day that I send it and then from there it's just released right yeah. like how do we know that that person won't like take it to value village at some point and then the person that needs it picks it up there or something you know and occasionally like the other day the person I wanted to send it to is like a really well-known speaker and I couldn't find his address of course <laughs> but um, I looked him up online and found a contact information and an email address. So I said, this is what I do. I think, you know, your team would be interested in it. And they wrote back and said, no, we're not accepting anything, mm -hmm. which is fine. Right. Yeah. Like I don't take that personally. They don't know me, but. Okay. Yeah. How do you, how do you not take it personally? Well, they don't know me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So <laughs> also, I mean, I use the process in my book myself, right? Yeah. So the book is how to deal with difficult feelings. So if rejection, like I tried and I was rejected or they didn't like it or, or that's just a feeling and I can use my own process to feel okay about that. So I've had years of, of practice doing that. And also, I just, I guess, just the clarity in myself that I don't, have an agenda when I'm sending it out to each person. It's just like I made the decision once. Mm -hmm. I got a hundred of these. I invested that amount of money into it. And now I'm just following my intuition, I guess, mm -hmm. to decide where they go. And so then I'm just now in the process of doing that. So I'm not evaluating at this point. Did it work with this person? Did it not? Because they have a bigger picture. That's great because so often authors hold their book it's so precious right it's so this is it's a piece of their heart it's you called it your life's work and you just cling to it and and one negative seems to tear down all the positive so the fact that you are so evolved <laughs> and, and understand your own process the process that you are putting out into the world and use it for yourself. I mean, that in itself is beautiful advertising <laughs> for the book that you've created. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like I said, I've been doing this for 25 years and I think what I have to teach is, is invaluable. Like it's life-changing. The people that try it are like, wow, that's amazing. I feel so different. I never knew I had this skill to do this. And so you want everybody to have that, but I just know everybody's not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And so I just, like you said, have to trust um, that there's, that whatever you create, there's an audience, there's somebody that's receptive for that. We don't generate something unless there's somebody, even if it's just a small group that are receptive to that. So I have to be, I've learned to be okay with just even if it's just a smaller number of people than the entire world which is who <laughs> I think should learn this yeah. Yeah. um that I'm okay with that and so then I just get to be curious about um what you know what does happen from here mm -hmm. and most of it like like you know as an author you don't know who picks up your book or you don't know who's touched by a certain phrase or a certain chapter in it you never get that feedback I mean rarely you do um, but for the most part we don't get to know that but we know those ripples go out there and well and that's why we do it right if if we if you didn't hang on to that then what are you then we're screaming into the void and it feels pointless so yeah even one percent right if if a hundred people pick up your book and you hear from one, that's, that's huge. That's huge. And if you've heard from 20, that probably means 2000 people have 
picked up your book. Yeah. And you know that yourself because you know how rarely you, like when have you ever written to an author yourself about a book? Yeah. Right? Like, or I'll read, you know, you read hundreds of things. You don't ever think to contact. It's so rare to think to contact the author. It's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> when you're on the other side of it, because that, that, provides so much affirmation and um, no matter how confident you are in your work or how good you feel about what you've put out in the world silence silence can hurt yeah it's a misassumption that silence means disinterest yeah. um, and I guess I know that again because I've been doing this work for so long in different formats besides this book and how often now I'll hear from somebody that I've never heard from before that will say, I've been reading your newsletter for, you know, X number of years. And I remember this thing you said like years ago that I don't know what it was. So I do occasionally get a peek behind the curtain to know things are happening for people. And those are so precious. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it can take years before someone actually will make that connection. Right. So as you, as you've seen, which is really fascinating, but I know that I have followed people for for years and like there's one person that I started following when I first started my blogging journey which was like a decade ago or more I think it was 2010 and I just connected with her on a personal level and we've kind of built a little relationship which is really magical but I I felt like we had a relationship all that time because I was getting a peek into her life but I never reciprocated and gave her a peek into mine so it is interesting how long you can let something like that go and she never knew and she no. meant, she meant so much to me <laughs> just yeah. it's incredible like that human behavior is really fascinating yeah it's kind of like you know with tv or movies that break in the fourth wall like you're an observer to something and you're having your own experience of it but you know but an actor when they turn to look at the audience it's such a startling thing because do you realize like oh now they're talking to me mm -hmm. it's the same thing I think when we read books or like we're can, we're having our own experience and it's touching us but it it's it takes a certain amount of is it courage or something or bravery to reach out to the person that is like that relationship between yeah. the two of you actually hasn't been established. You're the one that has to, to initiate that. Yeah. And uh, it's scary to initiate relationships with somebody that you think is, well, you would have respect for, right. Or yeah. yeah. yeah you put them on some kind of a pedestal or, or feel like somehow you're not worthy like they, they've spoken into your life so much. Why you're just a little crumb. What, why, why, why would it matter that I care? So, but it does like it, it does mean the world when, when you reach out generally, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure there are grumpy people that don't want to be connected to but Probably. you're not one of them. I'm not one of the grumpy people. No, no. <laughs> Hopefully not. I think that's one thing that like posting on social media, like, you know, Instagram and Facebook, because it's so much easier just for people to respond or share a like or share what you've posted. So that whole plot, those platforms are so uh, such an easier way to interact with people that either we read or yeah. that are readers of what we produce. Yeah. Yeah. It's much different than picking up a book by someone and then deciding to follow through after you've read that book to contact mm -hmm. yeah yeah which is crazy when I think about like I don't know that I've done that more than once or twice in my life you know yeah. but when I think about how many books I've been so deeply affected by it's a crime right like yeah that's upsetting <laughs> we need to do better <laughs> <laughs> and the same can be said for book reviews right because that yes. getting someone to leave a review on your book so I just checked Amazon before we got on this call and saw that you there are some reviews on Amazon for your book which is so great to see but 
your book's been out since February. And I think there were six reviews and we know more than six people have been moved by what you've created. So trying to encourage people to leave reviews so that others see the value is such a hard, hard sell. And it's the same thing, right? Like we, we consume the content, we love the content, and then we walk away. We don't do that next step of here's, here's my gift back to this creator. So how do, well, how do we, people? well, what was that? What was the question? How do, how do we encourage people to do that? Well, you're speaking right to a difficulty I'm having right now, which is, I know I could, should send out a notice to my newsletter subscribers just to say it would mean a lot to me if you would leave a review and it probably is right that many of them or some of them I shouldn't say many many would um would feel that that was a, a gift to me but there's just I still have a discomfort with asking and it's silly because I think if people should know that you know that that would be useful but they don't probably and I don't do that for people unless for the most part unless they ask so I'm grappling with that myself and I just should do it just to send out a newsletter and ask. What's, what's the harm yeah the, the worst thing is that they ignore it and yeah 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 it's like um with Etiquette. Etiquette used to be that you receive a gift or something that you appreciate, you would write a thank you note and you would put that in the mail and send it, right? Like it wasn't really my generation, but I feel like my grandmother's generation for sure. It was, you write thank you notes. This is an important part of just being a human, um, a polite human. So that's what a review is. It's just a thank you card to, to the author. Wow, that's a great way of looking at that. Yeah, that's really nice. Well, feel free to use that in your newsletter. I was just thinking I might have to use that. <laughs> I might use that. That is a great, that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am really, like, I know that now is the time for me just to get the word out more. And I am a little, a little stuck on that. And I do know what I could be doing and that it's hard to get out of that rut right because I think we do allow fear or insecurity even if even if we really believe in what we have to promote it's it's easier not to do it mm -hmm. it's true yeah. and I know for myself like when I've been stuck on things before one of the things that has helped me and probably went when I start doing it, I just need to put something in my calendar to say that today's the day I do it. Usually for me, it's in the past, it's been Tuesdays. And then that system just starts to kick things into place just to have it in my calendar. But the other thing that's been helpful for me, which I should do again, is just like not go in with the idea of like writing the whole thing and figuring it all out, but just go in and open it up and just get in the mindset of oh, here I am in my newsletter, here I am, you know what I mean? Like, just take it, like one little thing, just yeah. open the door, the, the open the door and start. And then once you get in there, mm -hmm. the momentum starts, at least it has for me in the past. So I can take advantage of that, but yeah. it is hard. It is hard, but I th yeah, I think you're right. It's creating that habit and um, just pushing yourself that little bit, that little bit more to, to get it there to remind people because you do have to put it in front of people multiple 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 times and sometimes it takes 20 times before they actually go oh I do need I need this book or oh I should leave a review or I'm going to actually respond to this email and just say hey thanks yeah, yeah. well yeah. even just having this conversation with you about it I can feel and puts me back, puts me in the mindset and is giving me some things to think about. And same with like for your listeners, wherever they're at in their writing journey, like just even listening to your podcasts or things like this, just help keep that alive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have um, ambitions for other book projects or do you want to like go on a speaking tour about 
how to feel okay on a difficult day? <laughs> well, a few things with that. Like I've had two people, like I have a private client that bought the book. She's in Germany and she's just started translating it. Really? To make a German copy, like just, un, she didn't, I didn't ask her to do that. Um, but she's translated things for me before, but I was like, wow, that's cool that, that she just took it upon herself to do that. I'm not sure what to do with that. And then somebody had offered a while ago to translate it into Spanish, mm -hmm. but to your question about a speaking tour, what I really want is to get it into classrooms. Mm. And so I'm still at the stage of trying to figure out, you know, how do you do that? Yeah. And one of the things I did was to make a YouTube video of a read aloud of it, which is something I learned from a teacher where you just read the book on Zoom and then they can show it to their classroom. Yep. So I did that. I but, didn't see any traction from that or it's the same as what we've been talking about. Like it's just, it's out there. I should go back and just see how many views it's had. Um, somebody did tell me that they saw it. So um Mm -hmm. But I did promoted that. So that's, I feel like I've got little pieces all set up and I just can start stringing them together. I don't know. Do you have any advice for me? Well, if you have a bunch of little pieces, that's your newsletter content. Like one week it's going to be, remember, I have a book. The next week it's going to be, here's the video of me reading aloud. And the next week it's going to be, I would love to come to your kid's school. Connect me with the parent teacher counsel or or whatever like there are all these ways that you can start with your newsletter to get the word out of this is what I want just asking asking your list to help you right yeah I need to write all those things down that you just said <laughs> it's the next step for me and you can you can hear that I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get the wheels spinning. So that's... well, because it's it's overwhelming. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to promote your work, and it's it's easy to feel icky about it in a way, because nobody wants to be a salesperson. Yeah, but you're not. You're not that you are selling a book, but you're not selling something like you're you're offering a tool that has potential to change someone's whole outlook on life so if you if you present it that way yeah that's yeah, true yeah how do you do that for yourself like with or are you, I you know what I mean? <laughs> if I can turn the tables for a second yeah yeah um I just try and be honest and authentic and if I'm feeling overwhelmed or tired or scared I say that I'd like it that goes into my newsletter or that goes onto my Facebook post or um, or if I'm feeling really excited about a process that I'm in the middle of, that I'll share that. I think people like vulnerability, at least I found that with my audience. So I've just taken a real, this is me guys, <laughs> this, is, this is what you get. And so far it's, people are generally receptive of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, vulnerability and authenticity are really, really attractive. Mm, yeah. And I think consistency is still the hardest, the hardest thing, because I'm definitely not posting things every day or pushing, pushing things every day. Because who, who has the time? <laughs> who has the time for that? You're yeah. doing so many different things, too. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of balls in the air. So I think I, my advice to anyone is just do what you can lean into the platform that you find the most joy in or where your audience is the most active don't don't spread yourself too thin so for myself Instagram is where I I enjoy it the most and then Instagram will automatically post to Facebook so my audience is actually more active on Facebook but I generally do my posts through Instagram because it's happier for me uh, and then I log on to Facebook to interact with whatever comments are there. And then my newsletter list. Those are kind of where I'm I'm trying to lean in, trying to be semi-consistent. Yeah. But it's 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 hard. Marketing, I think, is the heaviest burden that any 
any author, any entrepreneur, it's, it's the worst thing. And it's why people hire, <laughs> hire admin assistants and helpers with things like that. I'm just not in a position to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, we'll and there's value in, I think, value in my own voice being part of all, all the things that I'm putting out there. So mm -hmm. um, that is something that's important to me. Well, because most so those platforms are about like it's about having a relationship between you and the person that's responding so it's hard to how do you source that yeah, how do you source that? Yeah, exactly what else should we talk about <laughs> what should we cover did we unpack your book enough for people i don't know and if you want to talk a little bit about about the, about your book about the steps um well sure I can talk about the process like in the book or what I teach in the book a little bit yeah like who who is your book for and what are they going to gain by picking it up when I became a life coach 25 years ago or whatever the point was to help people move forward in life towards something they wanted to achieve but one thing I discovered was that people would take a few steps forward and then stall you know, and what I realized was that at those moments, they were running up against a feeling they didn't want to, a difficult feeling like being challenged or, you know, say I want to do public speaking, I'm afraid of actually doing that. And so I got really, really interested in what those emotional blocks are that we run into and how to deal with those. And so I learned a process that really uh, helps us be in the body and feel our feelings because feelings want to be felt. And when a feeling has been thoroughly felt, any feeling, there's none of it left to feel. Such a simple thing. Um, and so that's what, that's what the book is about, is how do you, if you are feeling sad or afraid or nervous or embarrassed or grief stricken or whatever it is, like what is a feeling? And it's, it's a sensation in the body. And when we listen to our bodies, which means feel the feelings because our bodies speak in sensations. So when we feel the sensations, our bodies feel heard and the sensation changes. And you can feel that difficult feeling, that sensation dissipate and soften and, um, and disappear. And so the book itself is um, just designed, there's five easy steps for doing that. Um, that really are intended just to keep a child or anyone's attention on the sensation itself. And so sometimes those sensations, usually they have a shape, you can feel for that. It has a texture, like it's hard or soft or squishy. Sometimes they have color, sometimes they have movement. So the book just takes a child or who's ever reading it through the process of actually having a difficult feeling be present and then follow my instructions in the book to to see and feel it change and then there's pictures that they you know can draw and the point of that is that if you're having to draw something you have to pay attention to it to be able to go oh that feels like a hard rock or that feels like a squishy strawberry or something so that exercise is designed to keep your attention in there too and then by the end of the book because the book is a certain length you spent that much time feeling through that feeling that was present and you feel different by the end. So it's just a very simple guided process exercise through that experience that leaves people feeling noticeably different at the end. And that was one of the cool things when we took it into the classroom was the teacher had the picture, the kids draw the pictures ahead of time of what the feeling felt like. And then at the end, and then also put into words what they learned and what the difference was so is this a process that you discovered through your practice through working with clients yes, uh, very much. and just kind of saw it form um kind of within your own head as as you moved along and then and now yes. it's fully developed process. that's right yeah yeah it's yeah, through 25 years of being with people as they're trying to feel something, but we have so many defenses against just sitting with a feeling that over time I learned like, where do people get stuck or what are the things that I can say that can move them at that point? So um, the, all the language in the book is the phrases that I've learned work best with people. 
um, the five easy steps are the steps like first you do this and then, you know, so you put your attention on your body and then you decide, is it okay for me to feel this? Is it okay if it changes? So all of it is just, yeah, a, a very simple form of what I've honed with thousands really of people over the years. So that's why I could write it in 90 minutes because I've just <laughs> done it so many times, but to have it, you know, really get refined, you know, in this format and with pictures, because that was one thing I didn't realize with children's books is that the images do so much of the work because I wasn't used to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember some tension or not tension, but discussion around what, what is this book going to look like and how, how can it really properly minister to children? What does an interactive book look like? Like there, I, there was a lot of back and forth about that and wondering about what are the appropriate kind of doodles or illustrations to have. And I think where it landed is, as you've seen, as it was put to practice in the classroom, kids really have responded to that, to that interaction, to the way it looks, because it, it is very child-friendly and easy to understand. Yeah. And that's like, as a, as a writer, I didn't have any any of that awareness about like I thought the illustrations would just be a picture of words yeah. that I was seeing and what I learned you know through talking with you and through reading children's books and just thinking about it a different way I realized oh the pictures have to actually carry the story as much as the words and so there was a lot of learning in, in that for me yeah yeah so it did go through quite a few like versions yeah. as we try to make that better yeah and I know even even the cover I remember sending you a few samples and they'd be like well kind of kind of like it but it's not quite right and then it was like this light bulb moment that was so silly where why isn't the why doesn't the cover look like the inside like what are we what are we trying to do here what are we why are we pretending like I don't know where my head was at I was all turned around, but I mean, we got there. It's right. <laughs> what we landed on is, is right for the book. Um, well, thanks to you. That was thanks to you for doing that. <laughs> You're the one that saw that, but. Well, but yeah. it, it took a while, right? Like, I, I don't know how many different examples I sent you where we were using like photographs of, of kids with their superhero cape or um, jumping yeah. on the bed. There were a few, a few different rounds that we went through and it was just it just wasn't right yeah yeah and, yeah. and again that probably speaks a little bit to my personality just wanting to get the exact you know <laughs> the exact thing and we did we did so we did. Thanks, for, thanks for hanging in there with me <laughs> work through all that yeah um do you think that there is a specific age where we start putting up blocks against feelings so you talk about how kids are so, so open to doing this book. At what age are, are you seeing resistance or it's a little, you're, you have to push a little bit more? That's a really good question. I think we start accumulating these little emotional bruises mm -hmm. from the time we're really, really young, even before we can speak. You know, like if we're left in our crib when we're one and nobody's coming and we feel terrified, that leaves a little scar, a little, a little bruise there that we don't have the capacity at that age to know how to deal with. And I just think we accumulate more and more of those over time as life leaves more and more bruises and ones that we have get more and more solidified. I think also there's a really strong connection between the emotional scars we have and physical, you know, conditions that we can develop. But that's why I think kids can learn how to do this really, really young because they can feel those little things. They're willing to go in there and play and feel them change. And that's why the book is too, is about this is a superpower. Your body already has it. Just as adults, none of us were taught we can do that. But I, I definitely like see people in my practice that have emotional pain that's, that's been sitting there since they were very, very young. So I think it's just part of like healthy self-care is learning these 
emotional skills, the same as you got to keep brushing your teeth every day, you know, otherwise they, <laughs> they don't do well. It, or you go to the gym to work out your body. Like this is just a level of our being that we were never taught that we have an ability to work with our emotions. We don't know what that realm in ourself feels like. We don't know it's a whole landscape in there. We don't know that when we go in there, it responds to us and we can change a feeling. And I don't know if that answers your questions, but I think kids like as young as like four or five could easily learn how to do this. I think the book's probably written for about age eight. Does yeah. that sound yeah. about right to you? Yeah. Have you, um, and maybe you, you can't answer this because of confidentiality, but have, have you presented the there's a blank drawing of just a person and where you you fill in your you draw your feelings around the person have you presented that to an adult in in your practice and had them participate in it that way yes I did that last week oh okay oh I actually gave uh somebody the book yeah so it's got the drawings and offered like the person that they could fill it in if they wanted to Another time, like just when I got all the drawings back from the kids in the classroom, I was on a Zoom call with a woman and she couldn't kind of figure out how to find a feeling. And I just held up some pictures of some of the kids, right? And one's got like, like a drawing of a feeling that's on their elbow and another's got one in their throat. And she was just fascinated by the kids drawing. She said, you know, she said, thank you so much for showing me that because it just shows me there's a range to like, you know, how this can be. And the kids' pictures are so different one from another. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. What a, it's, it's such a cool tool. Really. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you're giving me another idea that I can use for marketing too, which is just to send some of those pictures out. Cause I did get permission. Yep. From parents. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that would be great. And you do have, do you have downloads available on your website? Of yeah, the, of the drawings. Yeah. So anyone can go, can go to your website, learn more about the book. Is it wendydown.com? Yeah, wendydown.com. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a tab that says book. And then, yeah, all the information about the book is there. And some of the kids' drawings and some links probably to Amazon and, and Chicken, uh, Chicken House Press. Yeah. Yeah. It's there. Uh, and is your website the best place for people to go and learn more about you? Where else are you active online? Probably the best place is my website, but I have a YouTube channel under my name, Facebook. Great. Uh, I have a learning group on, on Facebook so that if people are interested, they can come in there and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. We're just coming on and chatting. Thank you for being the best publisher ever. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, you were just oh. there in it um, the whole way through. You explained things so well. You were so available, like to help with things. I had so many like iterations and you just were so patient with all of that and like helped with just the like how to put it all together I had didn't really know going into it how much work you were gonna do and you did so much and even now like you're you're there rooting for me and and helpful like even by doing this with me today this um it feels good to talk about it and yeah. thank you for for having a platform that allows me to do that yeah of course I hope I hope um you come away feeling encouraged and motivated to to start those little little marketing steps that you were talking about when i get off the call i'm gonna put them in my calendar yeah that's good I'm gonna do. that's yeah. great yeah and i i just actually do want to say to anyone listening that if they are thinking of writing a book or publishing a book and they don't know where to start or don't know who to have help them they should come looking for Aww. you because yeah, oh, I yeah think you're very good at what you do and i'm so grateful for you Oh, well, I'm grateful for you because I, I learned a lot through this process too. You do? Uh, what did you learn? Well, because it's, it's such a different process than doing a novel, 
right? It, it has to be intentional in a different way because there was such a purpose for this workbook that if, if we mess something up, it's, it's just not so easy to, <laughs> to, to get it on the right track again. Right. Because there's, there's your, your process that you're sharing your five easy steps. And then there's the drawings that have to relay those steps clearly. And in a way that kids are really going to connect with and be able to interact with. And it has to be put together in a form that is going to speak to kids. So it's so, so different than anything else that I've, I've been doing. So it's great. It's great. It just helps me build, build up my, my skill set. And yeah, it's oh, great. That's so interesting. I, di I didn't know that. So I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just, it, it's almost like it, it utilized a different part of my brain than doing the layout of a novel or a re even a regular children's book. Cause usually a children's book is just, here's the illustration, here's the text, super easy peasy. <laughs> you asked me earlier if I had an idea for other versions. And I remember you saying early on, oh, you could write this book specific to other specific emotions like anxiety yeah. or sadness or grief. So I have that at the back of my mind. But I think probably what I should do is handle this one first and get the marketing thing done before I move on to a next book because the writing of it's the fun part. Yeah. And I should just reframe that to say the marketing of it is the fun part and I just need to discover how. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Take it from overwhelming to fun. That's yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. reframe it. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Keep, keep pushing it. If you can get into the schools, that would be incredible. Yeah. Really crack that nut and I'm working on that. So yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Great to chat with you. You too. And Thank um, you. yeah, of course, of course. And I'm sure we'll, we'll be chatting again soon. I, I'm, I'm sure we will. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. The book is available on the Chicken House Press website as well as Amazon. You can find it on Wendy's website, wendydown.com. If there is a child in your life or even an adult who is struggling with big feelings, this is a really great resource that I would highly recommend. Pick up a copy of Wendy's book. See the change that can be made when the tools are given and the tools are simple. And this is the kind of skill that once you've learned it, you can take it into the rest of your life and let it serve you over and over and over again. So highly recommended, pick up a copy. If you are from an organization or a school or someone who thinks you would benefit by bringing Wendy in to chat with your group, certainly reach out to her on her website. I'm sure she would be thrilled to hear from you. Even if it's just a virtual um, appearance, reach out, see how you can collaborate on bringing this message to the people who need it the most. So thank you for being here. Thanks to Wendy for a great conversation. Thanks to you for listening. I hope that you've gleaned something really meaningful and helpful. Good luck with your feelings. And I'll be back again someday soon with another Writer's Chat Conversations.